on it and it
Good morning, everyone. We are just about uh, time for our service, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and start a little bit early because it's a full day. Towards the back of your bulletin, you'll notice the parish announcements. And first of all, I appreciate that you're here for Palm Sunday to kick off uh, Holy Week. And the Holy Week services that we have before us are within those announcements. Um, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday into Easter are all considered in liturgy in the ancient church one service. One, if you've ever been to one, uh, basically doesn't end on Monday, Thursday. It just begs for more. And what it begs for is Good Friday, and that service begs for more, and that's Easter Sunday. And so all of those are, in essence, one service. And so if you've never gone through that entire... Um, liturgy 
uh, you know, way of going through Holy Week, I encourage you to do so. The service times are there, and we certainly invite you to them. Next Sunday, the, the service times are a little bit different. We start outside at 6.30 in the morning before daybreak with our Easter vigil. 9 a.m. is our Holy uh, Eucharist here in the church, and 11 as well. We have eight baptisms next Sunday, so it's a great day, and it's going to be good to be together. I will note that we have a St. John's 101 class coming up. We do this once a year, and it's a time with me that I build the class to, to basically invite you who are new to the Episcopal Church, want to go deeper, or preparing for confirmation that are adults, um, to ask questions about our faith and tradition. And so that's coming up a week from sun next Sunday, so two weeks from today, our women's retreat as well, and another journey group. It's great to have you here today. Welcome, and I think it's time. Let's worship God. Please stand. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When they were, were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find there a colt tied that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this, just say this, the Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing, untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed him to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their coat cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming, of, coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple and when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Lord be with you. And also Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as king of kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life 
who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us go forth in peace. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, 
In your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and he became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. seated for the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. They went to a place called Gethsemane and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated and said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. In going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. 
And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy. They did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew a sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me, but let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophecy. The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you were talking about. And he went out into the forecourt, then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. And after a little while, while the bystanders again said to Peter, But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him. You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again. Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you, for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. 
Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole, co whole co cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to them. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. <coughs> Then they brought Jesus to the place called Gagatha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with them they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Ah, you who destroyed the temple and built it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests along with the scribes were also mocking him among themselves and saying, If you save others, you cannot save yourself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we see the leader. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger, and of Joseph and Salome. These used to fo follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of the preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council who was also himself waiting expectant for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Let the same mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the very form of God, did not treat equality with God as something to be exploited, but he emptied himself and took on even the form of a slave. And therefore, God highly exalted him. You may be seated. We 
if you're not careful, you can get whiplash from a Palm Sunday service. This service takes abrupt, crazy turns. It's jolting. We move from Hosanna to crucify him with just within moments. Now, to be honest, the reason we do this is that not everyone can show up or will show up on a Good Friday, and it would just kind of be weird to make no sense if we move from praising Jesus with palms in our hands one Sunday, and then, bam, he's raised from the dead the next. I mean, something happened in between. It's kind of a big week for him and for us for sure. And yet, in the midst of a service, it feels a little bit weird, doesn't it? One second, Jesus is the talk of the town, and the next, Jesus is wanted dead. How could anything change so fast? Kind of reminds me of our presiding bishop when he first became the bishop of North Carolina. You know, people loved him, and they were like, oh my gosh, he's great, he can walk on water. And then he made a decision. And they were like, oh my God, he can't swim. (laughs) And so it is today when Jesus rides into town. Expectations are high. Palms are waving. People are saying, finally, 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 we're going to deal with those oppressive Romans. His poll numbers are through the roof. But then he turns over the table in the temple that they love. He upsets the elites. He disrupts the status quo of people who don't want their status quo disrupted. And crucify him is all that can be heard. And this is because crowds, if you haven't noticed it, are fickle things. People don't like change. But if you haven't noticed it, people ironically are themselves the most changeable creatures there are. If you don't believe me, just watch American politics or, you know, American sports fans or whatever reality TV has replaced American Idol. Five years ago, when I first came here, you know, and my sports teams were doing well, y'all rooted for me. I made the front page of the newspaper. That's true. In my Chiefs, you know, uh, jersey. Everybody was rooting for the Chiefs back then. I notice not so much anymore. (laughs) Affections turn on a dime. And so it is in like fashion. The service turns on a dime. And it reveals a truth of us by turning on a dime that our affections go up and down. We love to raise people up. And we just kind of knock them down like bowling pins, particularly when they act in ways that we don't like. And you know, that's really the rub of this story today and the story of this week. It's been the rub, if you haven't noticed it, with our relationship with God all along. We don't mind praising God when God acts like we think a good God should act. But the story attests that we will say crucify him Very quickly, if God acts contrary to the way that we think or vote or act, and that's really what this day is about, and yet maybe that's all the more reason to thank God that today Jesus kind of is riding into a town very much like our own, and Jesus doesn't turn back in a world such as this even though we give him every reason to turn back, that Jesus will for once not bow to popular will and polls, but be who he's called to be. He will do the right, good, hard thing for once, even though we would do away with him when any of that runs counter to what we want and prefer. But that's an, indeed a wonderful thing, that Jesus remains constant in this changing and shifting age, that in this world such as ours, where everything seems up for grab, that Jesus 
was born and lived and, and ministered and challenged and, and worked and bounced into town on a borrowed donkey and gave up his life in a place where the truth too often goes to die. That in such a world as ours, as fickle as it is, here is a God that will never change to just make us all happy. Poll numbers don't face him. It is wonderful that our assumptions about how a, this God will act is not going to change how this God does in fact act. And by the way, that's the consequence of us shouting out, Hosanna, we give him that authority. But I actually think, having now as a priest gone through 25 of these Holy Weeks and Palm Sundays, that the biggest danger for us is to hold these scriptures at arm's length, to think that they're telling the story of a people not named us. This is not an indictment of crowds gone by. Now, our modern, sophisticated world has proved quite decisively that we are very much as capricious. And so they're calling all of us today, and they will throughout the week until we have the joy of next week with the resurrection to answer, how would we respond? How will we respond when God confronts our cherished temples, our precious practices, our established expectations? How will we respond when Jesus doesn't act like we would have Jesus act, when this king washes feet and calls us to do the same, when he confronts our prejudices and our assumptions about how we treat the least of those in the world, how we deal with enemies and give up a seat of privilege for the sake of others, when he confronts our cherished notions of ourselves and what makes somebody in this world first or last, an enemy, a friend, righteous or unrighteous, sinner or saint, what if he does something like talk about our money? Or the priorities of our lives? You start to realize pretty quickly how hosannas can turn into crucify him. Of course, we're gathered here on a Sunday. It's a beautiful day. And so we see ourselves, quite rightly, as a part of the Hosanna crowd. And yet, when you explore the dark corners of our common humanity, you have to allow that illusion to a little bit be challenged. For today shows us that even Hosanna people can become crucifying people when we're not given our way. And yet, still today, even to us, even into this world, Jesus rides. Into this place where everything changes and, and we, in honesty, very easily change too. And yet, isn't it great that in an age when everything seems kind of up for grabs, that the way of Jesus most certainly isn't. That Christ doesn't change. Instead, he seeks to change us. That he's the eternally fixed thing in this changeable, fickle place that we call home. And because he doesn't change, because he rides and tells the truth, because he offers us a different way to be in a world that's just dying for a different way to be. I hope you'll join me today, but really every day, all this week, and say, ride on, King Jesus.
Amen. Amen. God of joy, your son Jesus was highly exalted and given the name that is above every name. Bless those whose names are very prominent in our lives, whose decisions affect us deeply, whose good esteem shapes our well-being, whose wisdom guides our uncertain steps. Tend with loving care all who feel paralyzed by an uncertain future, tormented by a painful past, or bewildered in a fragile present. In a moment of silence, we commend you to you the people and situations that stretch us to a place of vertical need. Make us a peace, people of joy, who know no circumstance is below the reach of your cross, and no hope is beyond the possibility of your resurrection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Again, it's a great joy to have you here today. And if you're with us for the first time, welcome. We're glad that you're here. We hope that you'll participate in all of our uh, service continuing. And that's going to continue into communion. And we want to share that communion with you. Please know that if you are a baptized Christian, you're welcomed and encouraged to receive God's uh, blessing through the Eucharist here in this place. If you'd like to come forward and not receive communion, but have one of the clergy bless your life, the way that you let us know that that's your preference is to cross your arms over your, over your chest. Um, you know, when I go into Holy Week each week um, of the year and leading up to Easter, it reminds me of why I'm a Christian. Uh, I hate to break this to you. There's times in the Christian life that I you know, wonder, why am I Christian? <laughs> Do I want to remain a Christian? The, the Christian church oftentimes isn't what it should be. We Christian ministers aren't always what we should be. And the Christian community isn't always what we should be. We don't follow him exactly. But every time that I go into the story, I remember what I'm about. I follow Jesus. We're about Jesus. That's our North Star. All of us are not going to do that right. We're going to mess it up. But the fact that you're here today to start this journey in Holy Week and try to follow that way after 2,000 years, it's a way that keeps going. And I believe it's going to go into eternity and bring us ultimately home. In this changeable world, the one that keeps us going is him. So I'm glad you're here today. I hope to see you next Sunday. And I hope to see you all the ways in between as we follow Christ our King. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, our Savior. Amen.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, for our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself, and by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners, and to suffer death upon the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.'"